So you're staring at the screen procrastinating away and wondering how come I'm having a hard time simply getting things done. You can do all the planning in the world, but if you don't execute, it doesn't mean anything. So in this video, I'll go over four ways in which you can sit your butt down and be disciplined to do what you need to do through a popular framework known as the 4DX of discipline. Now, if you want to know what that is, stay tuned to this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel so I can continue to feed you nuggets of gold to boost your brain and behavior. So in short, the 4DX of discipline is also the four disciplines of execution. This is a method developed by Sean Covey, Jim Hewling, and Chris Machenzi, specifically for leaders and executives in the business space, although not limited to this area alone. It's aimed at helping you get your goals done. Broken down into four disciplines that you need to wrap your head around, the 40X framework is ultimately about getting you to focus on what matters most through setting a set of actions, monitoring them, and just simply doing them. Sounds relatively easy, right? Well, in a way it is, as long as you stick by these four disciplines. So discipline number one, focus and prioritize. This is all about focusing on the wildly important. As the name implies, it's all about making sure that you really prioritize and focus on what matters. Of course, that's easier said than done, especially in this day and age where we're bombarded by an influx of information and distraction. These days, there seems to be a never-ending to-do list. Some of us start off with checking off the things that seem to just be easy just to feel like we're moving forward. I know I'm guilty of that too. But little do we know, each time we expend our energy on something, our mental fortitude and willpower to stay focused depletes. This is why you end up making worse decisions as the day goes by, something called the morning morality effect, a topic I covered in another video. This first discipline is crucial to master because it's identifying the goals that are critical, also known as the wildly important goals or weeks of your list. It does take a bit of practice to really narrow down exactly what needs to be done. This step isn't just about setting goals. Anyone can do that. It's really about choosing what not to do. It's about narrowing down your focus to the core essentials, channeling your efforts and energy to the top priority. One great prioritization method used by designers and developers is the impact effort matrix, which you can implement into your life, as you can see on the graph here. This matrix helps to really settle on what are the things that are really move the needle that makes an impact with minimal or maximum effort. The more you can narrow down what you need to do, the better it is for you. So these days, it can be easy to deem everything as having multiple priorities, labeling things as priority one, two, and three. But keep in mind, the meaning of priority in itself comes from prior, which is the condition of being treated as most important or taking precedence to others. What this means is having multiple priority ones doesn't really make sense. You can really only have one thing that takes precedence over others. So when you prioritize, break it down into reasonable things. Don't have multiple priority ones, twos, and threes. Instead, limit yourself to just a total of one priority one, one priority two, and so on. So once you've learned the discipline of prioritization, the next discipline to work on is to act on the lead measures. What this means is identifying and acting on the factors that directly influence the achievement of those earlier wildly important goals. Lead measures are the things that you can predict or to play a part to the success of that given goal. They tell you what to do to reach your goal. This is the opposite to lag measures, which are the things that indicate the current state. For example, if you're running a business and your wildly important goal is to improve customer satisfaction, then lead measure may be the metric of average response time to queries. This is something you can predict via data analysis, and by focusing on this, you can influence the set goal of improving customer satisfaction. Or in a more personal case, let's say you want to lose weight and get in shape. The lead measure in this case may be the proportion of food you are eating on a day-to-day -day basis. This is something you can predict and control to then influence the end goal of that weight loss. Then, as you've learned to master these two disciplines, prioritization and focusing on the lead measure, next is keeping a compelling scoreboard. This third discipline is all about making progress visible. This is particularly important if you're leveraging the 4DX framework in your business because it is keeping things transparent and really highlighting to the entire team how things are going. Scoreboards of progress create a sense of competition and commitment. It makes people accountable for their goals to focus on what matters. OKRs, for example, a popular framework for reaching goals, is an example of this. For example, let's say that you're trying to reach a certain amount of subscribers for your channel by a given target date. Scoreboard might display weekly subscriber count against this target, this visualizing how close you are to achieving said goal. Having something visible instead of just in your head reminds you of what you're aiming toward on a daily basis. And if you're working in an organization, it aligns everyone else with that clear objective. Remember, this isn't just applicable for organizations. You can do this for yourself when trying to achieve a given goal. Keep track of your goals on a spreadsheet, measure progress week by week, month by month, and so on. So take, for example, the weight loss. Let's say you want to get more fit in the new year. You can track how many times a week you are getting a workout done and how many healthy meals you've eaten per day. 
the simple act of visualizing and measuring your tracking progress keeps you more accountable than not having anything at all. And finally, that leads me to the next and final discipline, which is creating a cadence of accountability. No matter how focused you are and how visibly evident your tracking is, if you aren't reverting back to the scoreboard or goals you set on a regular basis, then you aren't doing what you can to review what is going wrong. With any goal, small or big, it's best to establish a regular rhythm of accountability and review. In an organization, this isn't about micromanaging, but instead creating a consistent review of what's going on well, what's not going so well, and what can be done better. You want to celebrate your wins and identify the roadblocks that are getting in your way regularly. In the same way, if you're trying to execute on a personal goal, you need to keep yourself accountable to the goal you set out for. Because to be honest, it can be easy to just fall off if you aren't regularly reviewing why you're messing up or failing to adhere to those goals. So if you need that further accountability, tell someone close to you about the goals you have and make sure they take up on you to see if you're sticking to them. If you just say, I want to get fit, but don't actually let anyone know or don't keep yourself accountable to that, then in the moment that you have a bad day, you end up giving up because in the end, how visible and valid is the goal itself? Nobody really knows anyway. As a quote from John Lean goes, accountability separates the wishers in life from the action takers that care enough about their future to account for their daily actions. So when it comes to using the 4DX framework most effectively, commit yourself to a period that is short enough to actually follow through. If you stretch your goals too far and too long, then it won't ever feel like you're getting closer to that goal, which is why a lot of people end up giving up. Set up your four disciplines for a specific goal to follow through in these increments. These weekly increment phases are important because they create priorities that do not get lost. You get to executing and then once you've achieved that moment, you add more to the next week and so on and so on. Instead of just thinking, I want to get fit as some abstract broad goal, first break it down into smaller chunks such as for two weeks, I will cut out any carbohydrates for my meal plan and exercise for 20 minutes per day. Then keep track of this and take responsibility and accountability to set goal. After that two-week period, you can review how many days you've actually stuck through by referring back to your scoreboard and then plan for the next two-week sprint. So all in all, as you can see, the beauty of the 4DX framework is in its simplicity. It actually is really straightforward with no real magic formula involved. Ultimately, action is what creates results. And while having all of this knowledge is powerful, it is action that ultimately transforms. So get started now right after this video. But remember, none of your efforts matter if you don't remain consistent with a routine. And if you want to know how simple routines can lead to large results, make sure to check out the next video. I guarantee it'll be useful for you. And if you found this con content helpful in any way, I'd appreciate a like. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to help me help you continue to mine the golden mind.